From K2 News, this is your voice, your vote. This is a movement like nobody's ever seen before. And frankly, this was, I believe, the greatest political movement of all time. There's never been anything like this in this country and maybe beyond. And now it's going to reach a new level of importance because we're going to help our country heal. We're going to help our country heal. We have a country that, of course, is Donald Trump just minutes ago speaking to supporters at his campaign headquarters tonight. The former president closing in on the 270 electoral votes needed to win the White House for another term. Thank you for joining us for this special Your Voice, Your Vote edition of K2 News, everybody. I'm Steve Dunn. And I'm Deborah Knapp. Tonight, we continue to track the latest numbers from the presidential race and also those impacting us here at home. Tonight, we have team coverage with crews all around the Portland metro area. K2's Victor Park, Thunvi Verma, and Barry Mancold are keeping us up to date on the race for Portland mayor. K2's Emily Gersh and Shelby Slaughter are covering Washington's 3rd Congressional District. And K2's Christina Giardinelli is watching Oregon's District 5 tonight. Also, K2's Wright Gasway is tracking the city races decided by Portland's new ranked choice voting system. And well, first of all, I want to bring in K2 political analyst Jim Moore. Jim, thank for hanging in with us <laughs> all throughout this whole deal. And you, Let's look at the latest numbers if we can. Bring up those yeah. presidential numbers and we can let Jim uh, talk about those as we see them now. You see Donald Trump 51 percent, Kamala Harris 47 percent. As we look to the Electoral College, of course, it looks like a very difficult path for Harris at this point, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. As we're watching the, the battleground states, most of them have broken for Donald Trump. We knew it was within the possibility that they could do that for one or the other. They appear to have broken for him. And so as we're looking at it, uh, it, it basically Donald Trump is going to win this election, probably with about 306, maybe 310 Electoral College votes, it looks like right now. Okay, Jim, thank you very much. We'll be back to you soon. We want to take a look at a very quick closely watched congressional race. It's the race for Washington's third district, where Republican Joe Kent is running against incumbent Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez. You can see Glusenkamp Perez with 52% of the vote to Joe Kent's 48. K2's Emily Gersh is live at Joe Kent's watch party in Clark County now. Not sure if anybody's still there. And Emily, Joe Kent was not at that party for the majority of the night. What time did he finally show up out there? That's right, Steve. Joe Kent spent ma the majority of the night at the Clark County Elections Office where there was a long line of voters waiting to drop their ballots. And because of how close this race is, he wanted to stay there with them to ensure that every ballot got counted. Now, he finally arrived here around 930 tonight. He only stayed for about an hour. He made brief remarks thanking his supporters for being here and offering encouraging words about this race. Take a listen. It's not over yet, so let's just stay motivated, keep your spirits high, and be prepared to go cure some ballot smarts. And this watch party is just about over. A few remaining supporters stayed here to listen to uh, Donald Trump speak there. Again, this race is one of a handful in the nation that will decide which party controls the House. Of course, you may know that District 3 voted for Trump in 2016 and 2020. However, the District 3 uh, House seat was Republican-owned for 12 years until Marie Glusenkamp Perez was elected in 2022. It was a close race back then with Joe Kent at that time, she narrowly beat him, and it appears to be a close race again tonight. Again, this race has not been called yet, but we are going to stay on top of it and bring you the latest as soon as we get a final count. We're live in Clark County tonight. Emily Gersh, K2 News. Emily, thank you. Now we want to go to K2 Shelby Slaughter, who spent time with Democratic incumbent Marie Glusenkamp Perez. She stopped by quickly. She did, and you know, Emily said it best, this is a nationally watched rematch. Marie Glusenkamp Perez was only here for about a half an hour. She did address the crowd and said hello to a couple of people, but during her speech, she made some notable comments about the recent arsons on ballot boxes, both here in Vancouver and in Portland. We also touched on what it would mean for her to be reelected again. Take a listen. 
it means you get to work, right? I mean, nothing is a given. And, you know, I, I have a real sense of, like, obligation and urgency. And, and you know, nobody in D.C. is going to fight for our values if we don't, the things that matter to us. Um, nothing is a given. No, no, no day is promised to you. But to have this opportunity to get to represent and fight for my community is a, is a profound honor. And one thing I did talk to Marie Lucenkamp Perez about is the fact that she didn't endorse a candidate, neither Donald Trump or uh, Kamala Harris, which is unusual for a ticket like this. I did happen to ask her if she would in officially endorse Kamala Harris now that all of those ballots have been cast, and she said she wouldn't. Reporting live in Vancouver, I'm Shelby Slaughter, K2 News. Shelby, thank you. Now we want to move on to the U.S. representative for the 4th District in Washington, two Republicans against each other, Dan Newhouse with 51% of the vote against Jared Sessler with 49%, and the Washington governor's race. Bob Ferguson, the Democrat, 56% of the vote against Republican challenger Dave Reichert with 44%. I want to turn back to K2 political analyst Jim Moore again. You've watched all this stuff unfold throughout the evening. What has surprised you the most, Jim? I think the, the thing that has surprised me the most is one we just saw there. Dan Newhouse, one of he's the only Republican still left in the House who voted to impeach Donald Trump. He seems to have survived so far in getting reelected. He survived in 2022. He's, he seems to be doing it now. Now, the important thing is, Washington, like Oregon, you can postmark your ballots by today. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be a lot of ballots coming in in the next few days, uh, probably as many as 35, 40 percent. So it's a narrow lead. Does that hold up or not? But right now, re pretty remarkable. And, and that's why we're, we're hearing these candidates when they're coming out and talking. They're not declaring victory nope. at this point. They're looking at the results saying, hey, things are looking promising, but there's still a long way to go. Right, Jim? Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing that in Oregon with the close races for Congress. We're also seeing that in Washington state. All right, Jim, thank you. Let's uh, take a look now at another closely watched congressional race here in Oregon. Democrat Janelle Bynum is running against Republican incumbent Lori Chavez de Reamer for District 5. Been a nail biter race for the most competitive district in Oregon. Bynum showing about a three percentage point lead, but that's uh, with a majority vote still pending out there. The race has not been called yet. Anxious Democrats and Republicans may have to wait another day or perhaps more, as Jim talked about, before finding out if Oregon's 5th Congressional District will move the needle for either party in Congress. In fact, uh, we want to take a look at those numbers now, if possible. K2's Christina Giardinelli has been keeping a close eye on this race at the Democratic Watch Party in Oregon. She's live for us now. Christina, has Biden spoken? No, she has not been at this party. It's very much uh, end of the evening right now at this uh, what was the Democratic election night watch party. I'm going to step aside and show you. Uh, but yeah, very much an empty room with uh, crews just uh, cleaning up now and throughout the night. We have not seen any presence of Bynum, although I have been told that uh, she was in the building. But again, no sign of her at this watch party. She did not speak. We did, though, get a written statement from her campaign manager and it reads in part we are still waiting for final results for Oregon's 5th congressional district but it's imperative that every lawful vote is counted and our team will continue to monitor the results we are confident our path in our path to victory now she does go on to thank her supporters and promises more to come as those ballots continue to pour in I will say during tonight's events the uh, Democrats that spoke were all people who had the race has called for them or had uh, we're seeing a really uh, large um, majority of those votes coming in so not surprising that such a close congressional race uh, she did, has not spoken um, in person yet and it could be some time before she does uh, speak up um, with those ballots majority of those ballots still coming in but as you mentioned this is a, a very uh, competitive race Oregon's most competitive congressional race and then one of the most competitive in the nation uh, could tip things over for either party so of course lots of money coming in from uh, national groups in this party and we'll be watching closely and bringing you the latest but for now live in downtown Portland Christina Giardinelli K2 News. Christina, thank you. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, a close... 
hope Portlanders will soon have a new form of city government if chosen for uh, chosen for the first time by ranked choice voting. Those races include city auditors, city council members, and the race for mayor. K2's Wright Gasaway joins us from Studio C now to explain the mayor's race, and this could take a while, right? And Steve and Deb, as you said, our first go with ranked choice voting, it certainly could take a while. The county posted its first run tonight with about 170,000 ballots. Before we get to that, here's how it works really quickly. Every round, the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated. Then those votes go to whoever the voters ranked second. That process continues until someone gets over 50%. In this initial run, that took 19 rounds. Keith Wilson ends up with a significant lead, over 60% of the final vote in this first run, about 89,000 votes. He got about 35% of first place votes on the first round, roughly 60,000 votes. So once again, a significant lead. He had a large lead the entire time. It is important to note this is preliminary. The county will rerun this from scratch once a day starting tomorrow for the rest of the week and then a couple more times before certifying the race in early December. It is early, but a big lead right now for political outsider Keith Wilson. Deb. Okay, right, thank you. We're going to go now to K2's Victor Park at the Wilson Campaign Watch Party. So, Victor, they feel good tonight. Oh, yeah, I mean, and as Wright pointed out, Keith Wilson, he is a CEO of a trucking company with no political experience, is certainly on track to become Portland's next mayor. But in the meantime, he did spend much of the evening over here at Old Town Brewery on MLK uh, with his supporters and others, uh, friends of his. And at some point, the crowd erupted in cheers as they saw those uh, results come in. And then when they saw that 63 percent uh, lead come in and so uh, they were certainly uh, happy about that, but uh, his campaign tells me is that they, they have been focused on the issues that they believe Portland has been really thinking about. That issue is the homeless crisis. So I did speak to him as those results were coming in and take a listen to his reaction. Humbled, grateful, happy to be here with our supporters, enjoying the the success that we've really shown Portland. I mean, we worked hard to really bring our message to Portland. You know, you are right now at the top. It is just preliminary. Uh, how confident are you that you're going to hold that? We're, we're hopeful. I mean, this is all brand new process for us. So, but the lead seems significant, and we're confident in the effort we put forward. We hope it holds up. Yeah, as we come back out here live, you know, he uh, tells me that now he's going to get some sleep after knocking on 22,000 doors. Uh, he says that he's go obviously going to take a day off, but then he pledges, if he wins, that he will begin uh, forming his group and planning on what's next for Portland's future before January. Again, this is only if, it w if he wins. And of course, as you mentioned, all this is really preliminary. We're live here in the King neighborhood of Northeast Portland. I'm Victor Park, K2 News. That's a lot of door knocking, 22,000. <laughs> Victor Park, thank you for that. Let's go live to Thunvi Varma, who spent the night with a Commissioner Carmen Rubio campaign in Northeast Portland, and she came in second in the preliminary results for mayor. And Thunvi, she's keeping the hope alive tonight. That's right, Steve. So she's still optimistic because there are ballots still that need to be counted. And we asked her what she thinks has been working well for her campaign and what messages have been resonating with the community. Here's what she had to say. We want to keep our values, but we want to see progress on the things that matter most, like the economy and safety and housing and homelessness. Commissioner Rubio says if elected, diversity is going to be a large priority for her. This means making sure people of all different walks of life are at the decision-making table. Reporting live in Northeast Portland, Thunvi Verma, K2 News. Thunvi, thank you. And coming in third place so far in the, in the mayor's race, current Commissioner Renee Gonzalez. So K2's Barry Mangold was with him tonight, joins us live now. So Barry, how was the campaign feeling by the end of the evening? It's safe to say, Deb, that the Gonzalez campaign ended tonight on an unclear note, coming in third place within 2,000 votes of second place Carmen Rubio. Uh, and Gonzalez told me shortly after those results came in that he still wants to see more results, particularly from East Portland, east of I-205, that's known as District 1 in the new form of government. And he said that he's done a lot of outreach there, and so he wants to see those results. Take a listen. 
We're behind, but you know, there's a lot of votes outstanding in District 1. We were worried about this because you were seeing the early results were very slow in District 1. We were hearing on the ground a lot of ESL voters were confused by ranked choice voting. I'm hopeful they'll, they'll make up some of the ground not just for my election but for our democracy it's really important that we didn't just push aside a whole segment of the city that seems to have been intimidated by ranked choice voting but um but we got to see how the next couple days go come in but right now district one is way underperforming in terms of votes counted and we're trying to unpack that and one interesting hypothetical I asked Gonzalez about was if he is elected mayor, and that's a big if because he has to catch up to Keith Wilson's big lead, but if he's elected the mayor, whoever it is, will be in charge of nominating a new city administrator. That person will essentially be in charge of running all city services. I asked him if there's anybody he's interested for that role. Gonzalez told me no names are co that he doesn't want to talk about that just yet. I asked him if there are any mayoral candidates he would consider. and. He didn't give any specific name for that, but he did follow that up with a compliment to fellow commissioner and mayoral candidate Mingus Maps, referring to him as one of the smartest people he knows in government. Obviously, that's going to be a separate discussion for after the final result is certified. It's safe to say the Gonzalez campaign is eagerly awaiting the next round of results, results to come down Wednesday night at 6. Live in Southeast Portland, Barry Mangold, K2 News. All right, Barry, thank you. I want to bring in political analyst Jim Moore uh, once again as we look at this mayor's race. And very interesting as we see what Keith Wilson has been able to do at this point. Is that sustainable, do you think? I think it is. This is the first time we've gone through this. So here's what we get. We get all those 19 times that we go through it. On the very first one, uh, we saw that, uh, uh, um, just based on his name again, Keith Wilson. Keith Wilson. Keith Wilson had a significant lead. And as things went through, it turns out he was second or third place on the ballots. Mm -hmm. And that lead kept growing. So I think it looks good for him when we add in more ballots. Remember, how many ballots are there out there? We may still have about one-third to one-half of the ballots still to come in to be counted. That's based on looking statewide at how many ballots are still out there. So, so could it, someone like Rene Gonzalez still pull this off? Absolutely could, okay. could pull it off, and it'll be, depend. You know, he's talking about people in District 1 and the mm -hmm. Far East Side. If they turned in their ballots today, a big clump of them, yeah, that could absolutely absolutely make a difference. Interesting, Jim. Stand by. We're not done with you yet, <laughs> all right? Oh. Thank you. Okay, we want to